Okay guys, so in this lecture we're going to do the really exciting stuff. We're going to build out our first HTML form which will allow our users to type in different information and send it to our server and our server will go ahead and save it to our database. So this is going to be extremely exciting. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've reverted my project back to the way it was when PyCharm created it for us, okay? So I've gone ahead and deleted the extra router, I've deleted the extra handler, and I've deleted the extra handler in our app.yaml. Okay, so, and I'm going to put the version back to one. Okay, so I'm going to close the app.yaml because we are not going to be changing it. And I'm going to concentrate on this screen here. So, what's the first thing we need to do? Well, the first thing we need to do is basically we need to know what HTML is, okay? So if I go to Wikipedia, for example, I've just sent a request to Wikipedia and Wikipedia has responded back with this page. Now, what is this page? Well, basically, this page is a bunch of HTML that my browser has gone ahead, interpreted it, and rendered a graphical representation of that HTML. So if I right-click and, and hit View Page Source, I'll see that sure enough, this is all the HTML that Wikipedia has returned to me. And my browser has gone ahead and turned this into the graphical representation of that HTML. So essentially what we are going to be doing is we are going to be writing HTML that our server will then respond back to our, our users and our users browsers will interpret that HTML and turn it into the graphical representation of our web application. Okay, great. So let's see, first thing we need to do, we're going to use the main handler, which is mapped to the home request or the root request. So instead of writing hello world, we want to write a bunch of HTML. And then Python, if you want to learn, if you want to write several, several lines of a, of a string or, or or of HTML that we're going to be writing, I prefer to, to, to use triple quotes because our code will be much cleaner, okay? Great, so let's see. Here we're going to learn the very, very basics of HTML. We will not dive into too much detail about HTML because in the future we, we will be using more and more HTML tags, but we will also be using a framework for developing our HTML in our front end, which will make development much, much easier. And also everything will be documented with that framework. So again, we will have many resources to go and see how to do stuff in HTML. But for the time being, we're going to learn the very, very basics. So every HTML begins with a HTML tag. Now, most HTML tags open and close, right? So when I say open and close, it means that we have a tag that opens the HTML and then we have a tag that closes it. The closing tags have a forward slash before the tag itself, right? So open HTML and then close HTML, okay? Great. So this is what will define our HTML. Inside our HTML, we have two main tags, the head tag which usually contains the some, some kind of additional information to let our browser know how to render the page. It has additional information for search engines, such as the keywords we want to use, the, the, the description we want to have on our search, res, search results, so on and so forth. In this project, we're not going to be using it because we just want to go to the very basics of seeing how we lay out stuff on our browser, okay? So the, the, the tag that we will be using is the body tag, okay? Now the body tag contains all of the visible HTML in a page, okay? So this is where we are actually going to build the page, okay? Great. So the first thing I want to do is I want to show a big title, so a header. So I'm going to open H1 and say my guest book, and I'm going to close H1. And if I go back to my application, refresh, sure enough, this should print out a big title. Okay, this is looking good. And so the, the main thing I want to do is to open up two input boxes, right? One, two, so that a user types in their name. So they type in their name, hey, I'm Bob, hey, I'm Michael. And then the second input will be for their message. So hello, how are you, etc., etc. So I'm going to say name and then open up a HTML tag, input type text name 
user underscore name and input is a tag that doesn't mean, need to be closed so you don't need to write this for example right this part you don't need to write and i know it may be confusing that some html tags need to be open and closed and others don't the vast majority of html tags need to be closed but input is an exception you, you'll just get the hang of it and learn as you go okay so i'll delete that and i'll i'll go ahead to my browser refresh and sure enough we have the input box that we can now type okay i'm going to do the same thing for message however i'm not going to add another input box because i want this input or this box to be a little bit bigger so for that i'm going to use a text area right and i'm going to say the text area name is going to be message and we'll see why names are important in just a second and text area does need to be closed okay so let's see how this is looking and here it is our text area see it's a bit bigger well we can actually resize it but it's a bigger input okay uh, the last thing we need is another input but this time the type is going to be submit and the value is going to be send right so what is input of type submit well input of type text as you saw is a plain text field input of type submit is going to be a button so let's go ahead and refresh and we see we have a button and the value will be the label of the button so it's send okay okay but this is looking kind of horrible so let's go and, and space things out i'm going to wrap each item in a p tag the p tag needs to be opened and closed and effectively what this is doing is creating a paragraph so by creating a paragraph and putting each input into the paragraph we are separating it in a new line so it will be just a little bit more spaced out okay and the same thing for our input i'm going just indenting stuff properly so that it's nice and readable and i'll hit refresh and we see everything is nicely in a new line now i'll make things a little bit wider just so we use up a little bit of more space so i'm going to add style width is going to be 300 pixels okay and i'm going to copy this style and apply it to my text area as well I'll refresh and we see that the, the the inputs have gone a little bit wider and for the text area i'll say rows is equal to five and what this will do is make it a little bit tar taller okay great awesome okay so the last thing we need to do is we need to add a form right if i do if i click here well nothing will happen because this button doesn't know what to do so in order to tell it what to do we need to add the form and we need to, we need to make sure the the form wraps the sorry this is a lowercase p we need to make sure that the form wraps the entire in all of the input boxes okay and the form must have two parameters the first is the action which i'm going to say is forward slash greet and what the action is is it tells where the data must be sent to our server so this is the path that we're going to be sending our our username and our message for our server to then grab and store to our database okay so it's going to be the, the forward slash greet path now something should tick in your head right now and you should be thinking okay a path a new path that means that we will need to add it to our router and you would be absolutely correct we will need to add the forward slash greet path into our router so that our server knows to what to do with this path okay okay the, the next thing is method which method do we want to use or in other wor words which type of request do we want to send it do we want to use a get request or a post request in this case i'm going to go ahead and use a post request so we are going to send a post request to the path greet and then our server will pick up the data username and message and it will store it to our database okay so let's see how this is looking i'm going to refresh and type in for example name is michael message is hello exclamation mark send and this should give a 404 error because we have yet not added the forward slash greet path to our router great everything is working as we expected so in the next lecture let's implement the router and let's implement the forward slash greet request handler